and we're going to open this up, and then we're going to right click on host PC, and we're going to add a device. If I can just go back one step. If you do have to update your device uh, catalog and download the DTMs, you can see we have them here. We have the Foxborough Link, uh, the uh, PH10S Smart Sensor, and the 876PHS. Uh, uh, you would go to Device Catalog once you've downloaded these, Update Device Catalog, and it would bring them in. And I only have a few, so I'm only going to take a couple of seconds here. So that you can see that once you get the software, It'll put it where you need to, but then you've got to update your device catalog to bring them in so they'll be available for us. Okay, ours are. So now you want to go to uh, over here, build a tree under host PC. You're going to add a device, and you notice that's the driver right there for the uh, Foxborough. Uh, PH10S Smart. We're going to double click that. Now we have to know where the uh, COM port is. So uh, you can, a lot of times it'll pick it up for you. Let's see if that happens here. We're going to right click and go to parameters. And then you notice if you drop down on serial interface, mine happens to be on COM17. Uh, if you don't know where it is or you don't see it here, you can go to Device Manager on your on your computer and look at the tree. Let's do that. The instructions for doing this are also uh, in the in the manual for the sensor and the uh, 876 uh, PHS. But I'll show you how to do that here. Uh, if you go to your computer uh, and System Properties, your Device Manager. This is probably the most important thing uh, out of this. If you go over here to uh, ports of COM LPT, it'll show you, here's my USB adapter. It's on COM 17. You need to know that when you configure uh, Pactware, that's all. So if you don't know how to find that, go to your device manager and look up uh, where, what COM port you put it on. Because every time you plug into a different uh, Port on your laptop, you could come up to a different COM. So you need to know uh, when you start it up. And this one is on COM 17. So we'll go back over to Pactware. Okay, and we'll tell this. I want to go to COM 17. I want to apply that. Okay. Now I'm starting to build my tree over here. And now it wants to look at COM 17. And I want to add a device. And I want to use the Foxborough PH10 Smart USB to LEN here is the protocol. And you double click that, and now you have your sensor there. Then when you go to device, you can connect, and you see this, there's uh, some activity that goes on there. Then you go to load from device, we're going to use this device uh, box quite a bit. We're going to load from the device and this takes approximately two minutes. Uh, you'll notice two things uh, that on this uh, built bar on the bottom is building. Uh, it loads up everything from the sensor so that you can now go ahead and configure the sensor and calibrate the sensor. Um, also when you get the USB, uh, smart USB adapter on the front of it is a little window and if you're communicating uh, you'll see red and blue lights uh, flashing fairly rapidly and that'll tell you that yes in fact you're communicating to the sensor through your USB port and see it's building up fairly quickly here. And then we'll be able to go ahead and configure and calibrate. You'll see the box go away in a second here and then we'll know that it has uploaded. Now we go back to device device box up top here and we go to parameter and then look at this other drop down menu come over here online parameterization you want to click in there and it'll bring up the menu tree now it's actually talking to your ph10 sensor uh, ph10s sensor um, if you want to make any changes this is a fairly important point we're going to do a calibration today 
But if we go right to Calibrate, it won't let you do it. It's password protected, just like the transmitter is going to be. So you have to go to General before you make any changes, and then go ahead and put your passcode in. And you want to apply it. And you notice it grays out over here for a second, and then it comes back. It is, it is talking, you can see by the green circles down here. Now we can go to do our calibrate function. We're going to change this to a two-point calibration. It's actually five points are available. And I want to do a smart calibration. I have a four and ten buffer today, but I don't want to go through the, the, uh, uh, the process of putting in the numbers myself. I've already configured the parameters under calibration. So we're going to two point smart calibrate. It's in my first buffer. I press next. It's asking me to wait. Now it says apply the first solution. Well, I just told you we're in the first buffer already. So we're going to press next. Notice it won't allow you to do anything because it's <coughs> stabilizing. Um, it tells you a live temperature and a live pH reading. Now it says the measurement stable and it was buffer 4. We're okay with that. So we press next. Apply the second solution. What I'm actually physically doing right now is rinsing the sensor. So I'm putting it into 10 buffer. I'm going to press next. You'll see the live reading change over here. And then it's going to take a few seconds to stabilize. Notice I can't press next until it found a buffer. Now it says you can go ahead and press next. And then things are gray over here. It's, it's thinking again. It's still writing the calibration. This sensor, now the calibration parameters are not in the computer, don't forget. They're actually in the sensor. The sensor can now be stored. And when there's a need for a sensor in the field, then uh, this can be taken off the shelf, connected to a transmitter. The transmitter will read it up in the matter of about a minute. It will be calibrated and ready to go with no field calibration necessary.